Hello and welcome back everyone to the last or penultimate game of this series. CLG roared to a 2-0 start, but Team Liquid clap back hard in Did game they also three. roar? They, rah! I mean, I think Orn <laughs> does it. It's literally bellows. True, breath. true, I true. Really like bellows is a different thing, but you know, he's bellowing uh, all the same. I mean, a really good game. I think everyone really did very well over there. Santorin got all three lanes ahead. We had, I think, a mm -hmm. deathless Orn overall. Everyone looked really comfortable in game yeah, three. Yeah, uh, the thing that Team Liquid brought back was structure. They track contracts. They draft a really straightforward team comp, dive. They get their picks off. They have really good scaling uh, for both their carries later towards the, the, the end stages of the games, and they can just play front to back. And I think that guy on your screen right now, Han Sama, needs to continue to perform at a high level. They're doing these Ziver, Ziver Zeri trades. He needs to be completely on point with how much power AD carries have in the current meta. He has been off in a lot of these games, and he cannot have another off game, or Team Liquid's year will be over. I think that last game is just what the doctor ordered for them. Great stabilizer for the mental game. The thing is, now you're going into it, and you have to give Blue Side back to CLG. Yeah, and Blue Side on this patch has been very powerful. Yes. Yeah. See what the first pick priority is here because CLG have been able to whittle down, especially on the bottom lane picks. And statistically for both of these teams, they have a 67% win rate on blue across the split and about 50-50 on red. Mm -hmm. So I know we've seen them go back and forth. Oh, it's kind of valuable, but both teams have performed better on blue. CLG side selection here, pick it in game five. If they lose this, we'll have selection again. Odds maybe favor them, but TL have gotten better and better throughout the series. Each game looked better for them than the last. An early Jarvan ban yeah. through for CLG as Seraphine remains on the TL ban list. What the heck does CLG have planned here? Because Jarvan hasn't been banned one, two, or three in any of the previous three games, and they just throw it out there. Wow. I have, they have to be following up with a Trundle or something then, too, because that's Santorin, unless you know, Goku champion. Unless they're trying to get Team Liquid to ban Trundle. And they're just leaving up everything, right? To play it. Like, this is a really interesting idea. So, Sivir going to be dropped by the TL side, saying, no, we're not going to let you play that one. I mean, Zeri feels like a fairly unanswered AD carry regardless. But, I mean, anytime you don't go for, like, ah, oh, the meta bans, like, mm. you're willing to take stuff back, it's fine. Yeah, and with Seraphine Sivir being banned right now, I can still see them first picking Trundle and then saying, okay, Hansama, play oh. Zeri, because they just don't have faith that he will perform well on it, but this is a really weird ban phase. And to be clear about Luger's champ pool, it's 10 games Sivir, 8 games Zeri, next place is 2 games Seraphine. Like, he just plays those champions, not that he can't Calista's play others, to be well. clear. Yeah, Callista as one of the primary AD carries is open, but it's like, do you really want to give okay. us Callista bud? Because that is a perma red side ban. So Trundle is open, Yone is open, Zeri is open, with a lot of other things being Bam. I think it's got to be the Zeri here to, to have that upper hand for the AD carry scaling for for later on in the game. Yumi is also available too to pair with it, so it's just it just seems too good uh, for me. Plus, Zeri is good against Trundle. You know, as an AD yeah. carry, you'd be like, great, there's a sitting duck jungler there. But why? Like, why give Santorin Trundle by banning Jarvan? Like, what is? Because the Trundle doesn't have any threat on the Zeri. I Thanks guess? for the pillar. I'll zap through it. I'll, it, jump, I mean, I'll jump over it, I'll zap through it, exactly. So part of my mind as well is the way they're gonna play this draft though, is they're like, yeah, as long as you can't lock down backline, like we're good here, go go play a, a, a semi-tank, we're chilling. If you can't engage on us, we're happy with this one. I mean, maybe it's the Zareth angle, you know, <laughs> we're going for that one. Um, but it, it makes me think CLG have a plan with how this draft yeah, is playing out. They have a comp they in must. mind. Jinx comes through for Team Liquid's side. First of the split for Han Sama. I mean, Jinx Trundle team fight comp. That's what Team Liquid is shoehorned themselves into right now. So CLG can then pick a lot of dive. A lot of times Jarvan is really good against like control mages, which would be another reason you would possibly ban it if CLG was then also going to try and do scaling team fighting. But I'm, I, I still don't understand the Jarvan ban. So yeah. Han Sama across 15 games, Jinx is easily his Whoa. best champ on his career. 87% win rate when his overall career is 54. It's a 30% win rate jump when the man's on Jinx. Yeah, there's biases in the data. Who cares? He's performed when he's picked this champion and he's got a trundle for safety. Certainly does. And Team Liquid straight up structured front to back team fighting yeah. is what got them the win in the previous game. So that's obviously what they're gonna want in this game as well. 
set up those battle lines. That makes you also then project further into their draft and think that, okay, they're also going to need either another frontliner from uh, Core JJ or Bwipo. One of those two has to be the main engage because Trundle is not the main engage for your team. So you need mm -hmm. some hard CC on one of those two roles. And I would expect Core JJ to have a CC support uh, because they're playing into a Zeri Yumi lane here. What if it's Zillion here? <laughs> Could be. I mean, it's fast trundle. It, it would be a be. blind zillion, though. And blind zillion the thing is that Bjergsen has, you know, pulled out the zillion in a lot of game five scenarios, but it is rarely blind. Yeah, I know. So unlikely there. Orn is indeed the grab. We'll see if Silky like cares it. about that ban. Yeah. I like it too. And, and that, that's that CC, that other main engaged front line yeah. that I'm talking about there for Blibble from the top lane. Plus, worked out great in game number one. I would give 0% chance that Dokla picks Renekton. Uh, into it though this time around. I'm gonna give it two. You're gonna give it two percent. All right. <laughs> There's always a chance. You're, you're leaving. You're leaving up. <laughs> yeah. Leaving up the strong two. Meanwhile, they do get again the Yone ban here. Uh, one of the most. No brainer. Yeah, exactly. Fearsome champions here with both those solo laners. And I do wonder, like the, the team fighting front to back is still very strong. If they run Jinx Lulu, they can definitely run that back rather than having like a third engager because Orn Trundle is actually pretty good engaged with just the two. And I would think that Team Liquid would then want to supplement this with an Azir in mid lane again. So if, if CLG do not ban out Azir in the secondary bans here, um, I think Bjergsen for sure just picks that uh, and they save yeah. the counter pick for Oh. Uh, and they say the, the counter pick for Core JJ. So CLG, are you going to give it to him? I think perfect four five bans by Team Liquid there as well. Yone and Silas. Silas angle was so juicy there. If you don't ban the Azir, they've got to take it again. Yep. And then that would mean CLG goes back to a call. And hope they play it better this time. They say no. Zillion still maybe the angle. There aren't really any other damage threats from the team. Orin and Trundle really aren't it. So uh, says now nah, one threat comp still too much for us. So gets rid of it. Uh, the reviving the slow play certainly could work. It could be on Hansama. So yeah, is it Azir after all? Or does, do they really want to let both souls get counterpicked? Does it feel to you like TL is just getting what everything they that they want? A little bit. I mean, Jinx has one recorded pick on this patch in top region. Ooh, the disengage. Jenna always pretty yeah. good into Wukong to be able to buff the, the monkey right back out of those team fights. Gives a lot more protection here for this Jinx. And the lane phase is actually quite good, too. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you on the Toronto Orn point, though, right? Like, Orn yeah. was clearly very good in the previous game. That said, it was Orn as the counter pick. Now it's mm. Orn counter picked. Dokla is happy to play any of an array of counters of fighters top lane. Azir does Take go through the Azir. CLG. Mm -hmm. They've almost certainly got the better backline damage now. Yeah. Question is, is it a side lane play? Are you trying to match top laners? So Camille will try to keep the Orn locked down. And to be fair, can try to answer the Jinx in a team fight. All right, Fudge did it. The Camille into the Orn counter pick. Let's see if Dokla can replicate that success. Team Liquid, the reveal here, Bjergsen, what is it going to be with all the mid lane bands? The Ari finally, the Ari. finally coming back. Quick nod from Core JJ. Locked in for his mid laner. Team Liquid's backs are against the wall, but they handily took care of business in game three. Must do the same here in game four. Hansama, I believe, 13 and 2 on his career on the Jinx. Has performed. Whippo back on an Orn. He's done so well on as well. Yeah, I think Team Liquid are actually very happy with this draft, considering they're on red side this time around. They're able to get Santorin, his most iconic champion. Whippo just had a great Orn game for them. I think the biggest question is whether or not Han Sam is going to be able to exist in teamfights. Wukong, Camille, possibility of being buffed up by Yumi as well. Like, how well can Core JJ's Janna, a very seldom seen pick, keep Han Sam alive? And CLG, how quickly can they get this map open? They would love to split push. Mm. Get this split push going, open up this map, get their picks rolling. Final comments from what could be the last time in this split from the Team Liquid coaching staff. Spending on an incredibly star-studded super team. Grabbing Gyoto over from Immortals as well. Grabbing Hansana with a great world just last year. Still poised to be eliminated in the top six. Fifth, sixth in LCS playoffs. Not where they wanted the season to end, but with how game three went, they are on the trajectory of the reverse sweep of moving on and awaiting that EG TSM victor on Sunday for a spot in the championship weekend. We'll see more of one of these teams in just three days.
Is it CLG ending 3-1 as uh, I predicted? Or does TL <laughs> keep it going? We are on to the rift for game four. If they're gonna do it, Freak, it probably has to be a meaningful contribution from this counter pick, Camille. Dokla here is the one that they gave the draft resources to that counter pick, the Camille. Whippo unafraid to blind pick the Orn. Yeah, after the success in game number one, of course, that one was in answer to the Renekton. And the Team Liquid roster is all about winning. It's put together to win the LCS. And as TL find their footing in the series, Centaurin has his eyes set on the championship. I really want to win and not only, you know, go to Worlds, but like actually win an A because for me, it's it's been a while back in 2015 spring. Uh, and this is the only reason why I'm still competing. You know, I want to get titles. I want to go to Worlds, do well at Worlds, this kind of stuff. And for me, the first step is win an A first, which I just haven't been able to do. Um, but I feel like I've been close and, you know, at some point it's going to, we're going to hit and we're going to win. And to add, Santorin has actually been so close. 2020 on FlyQuest, finals in both spring and summer. 2021, Team Liquid, finals once again, although Migraines took him out of the actual competition. Finals again in the summer split of that season, and then third place in the spring of 2022. So really wanting to break through and recapture that title. And he's on the Troll King. He is the Troll King to me. 27 and 10, his trundle is so feared. It has been banned all of last series, every game of this <laughs> series, but was left open by CLG this game, daring him to pick it, which of course he did. Yeah, hey, him and X Smithy have been the two that have the most fearsome ganks with the champion as well. Santorin, even sometimes going for super early trundle ganks with the pillar, going forcing flashes. See what they can get out. Tracking already, though, spamming on the yellow pings on him as Santorin does a normal clear. Palafox, I love this ward. Mid lane push means you get to move up ward the Raptors. They'll be able to suss out jungle. Centaur may throw a path to skip Raptors entirely and not get the info away. Uh, pretty uh -huh. standard, actually, just go red right into like something like uh, red buff or, you know, looking at scuttle afterwards or top lane and indeed skips the ward. Well, especially when you're Trundle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't have that any AOE. Stop. Don't have any AOE. Oh, he's AOE. actually mid instead. He never sees him and he's got no easy way out. He's only level no two. Way. He cannot jump, saves the summoner. First blood comes through. Great passing by Santorin around all the vision. How does he keep doing it? <laughs> the level three gank on Trundle. Troll King! Level two <laughs> pulls it off. Troll King! So Palfox self baited like like I thought as well. You know, it's like the classic Raptor Ward, but those are choppers are pretty good. It's gonna be a lot of damage to Boom. Yeah, he can regen it, but still nicely placed by Han Samati. He'll get the early push. And as the cannon goes down, farm will be tight between those two 80 carries. Uh, I really like the bellows right there. Immune's part of the stun and knockback there. But guess what? Contracts near top side. We'll get some damage, will not force the flash, but it may require Whippet a TP. I don't know. He's still got. Uh, that Doran's shield for regen. What about this uh, scuttle crab here? Because Santorin, yeah. seeing contract go like for it. the gank, is going to be able to slip in, gets it from him as what? well. The price of the damage. Could be first crab, sorry, first blood, and also a double crab for Santorin, considering his bot lane does have cryo. Opt to kill chickens instead of crossing mid for the quick crab take, though. Still a very strong early game so far by TL. Bot lane's in the recall, is part of it, and his mid lane the same, so indeed. Let's them buy. Bjergsen will hold his TP. He walks back to lane. Only had uh, the assist buys boots and uh, upgrades refillable with it, or you know, uh, buys his Doran's ring regardless. And we still see the top lane trade go in as Dokla dodges the turret aggro. But it's two CS lead for Guepo despite receiving a gank. Dokla will make this a freeze as he matches the recall. Exactly. He groups up the minions there so they'll focus fire the first one down the line from him from his side and get it to slowly push towards him. Oh wow, interesting. So I don't have much to buy, so I'm just going to actually try to deny you some XP and gold. Indeed, forces the TP. Misses two minions, grabs the third. Let's try right there. A little bit of stun, a little bit of damage as he kites away and blocks a bit of it. Grass still comes through for Whippo. Gets the cannon. Orn is just such a unit, man. Like, yeah. every time I see Camille flying around doing all this fancy stuff, then Orn just wins the trade. There he is up. 700 golden items, which doesn't surprise me, but Smite. Auto! Gets it in time. Ooh. Bottom Scuttle does come through, so it ends up not being Double Scuttle because he didn't path towards it. So Contrax gets one himself. Yeah, very, very close on that because Santorin did have a Smite Charge up as well, trying to get into range. But should be another another Farmer, another Calm one for the early stages. On level six, Contrax can make some big moves. But not a lot of openings. 
until yeah. then. Feels like a little bit of a nervy start from CLG to me. Dying to the first blood of Santorin, that kind of weirdly timed smite by contracts. I feel like Dokla not really trying to put the pressure on in the top lane, but has not been able to. So I think Team Liquid definitely in control here in the early game. This TP Flash version of Camille, we've seen a lot of permutations there at night sometimes, but of course, Orin relatively uh, tanky can make the ignite not terribly useful. And Centaurin sees that Gromp is up. It's like, Wukong's coming. Camille's pressure. Can't go for it. Take the reserved option. Get some vision. We'll see if Kondex is able to see it himself. May not check that brush right away, and we'll see how long this one's going to live. You can get a lot of mileage out of this one until the blue buff respawns, and you pretty much always walk through the brush with getting blue. Meanwhile, we've got our first support roam timers as well. See if there's any action from this Janna, the core JJ pick. It's pretty, it's pretty rare. Hasn't been seen a couple of times. Yeah. Um, does have the possibilities of getting a little bit of vision here through this uh, river setup between mid. Of course, the Ari looking for possible roams. So if you can get the early support control vision through this river, uh, which is where exactly he is right now, then you can try and open that up for the Bjergsen level six Ari play. Yeah, when we've seen the Camille win this matchup, like in the C9 series versus EG, Fudge talked about in his interview how much the top lane vision has to do with his ability to play aggressive, because especially once he gets Divine Sunderer, that's the moment we're waiting for. He will be able to kill Orn in long lanes, but he will be very vulnerable to ganks. One important note, though, is Dokla did take a more conservative laning setup. He went Flash instead of Ignite, so he wouldn't be as gankable by an Orn all in. Yeah, jump the Trundle Pillar and then even Flash if they Flash Follow or anything else. You can even dodge ulti, things like that. If you're close enough range, you can ult for ult and dodge the knockup entirely, but it still means you're locked in if Trundle's there, so... Yeah, the movement can matter a lot. TP, or sorry, Rico finally comes through for Whippo, so you can shove this in, deny it all. Get the vision's the important part, because it means you know you actually can shove it in. Nice Ooh. knock up there. Charma's gonna land. There's a lot going on. He's only got Ghost Flash. Othies gets towards the wall. The heals are enough, and indeed stay alive. Three summoners out from CLG. Only one burn from Team Liquid, cleansing the exhaust. Definitely a nice combo there by Team Liquid. Pull that off a couple times. When Core JJ lands the tornado with the Glacial Shroud, they can chain it with the Jinx. How much time here can they waste? They see Santorin trying to use up a little bit of jungle time while the Rift Herald is spawning, by the way. So timing for these trades, yeah. really important. All these summer spells down pre-Rift Herald arrival. There she is. TL would have first move up towards that Rift Herald, and they've also already burned the Zeri ultimate. So contracts can't start this Rift Herald knowing Santorin is path up towards it. But at least Scuttle gives vision. That means Contract's a lot to play around here. Not going to be easy to lock down. Of course, has the Wukong W, so nothing's going to matter there. You put a pillar, he jumps over it. The ward could be fought. They can start this one anyway. What's the pressure going to look like? Camille's walking back from base. No TP. Wave is under the tower, so it's going to be a sacrifice of 100 gold. And even more experience if he drops it. But he is going to do that to play for Herald. So bottom lane coming for Team Liquid as well. A wave denied. And Zeri going to stay bot lane. So this is eventually a 5v3. The question is how much time can you buy? As Jinx gets Correct. sent back, they leave just Core JJ. Oh, whoa, whoa. CLG jumping into this one. They know the eye is available. Will not put it smite range yet. Big smite up for both junglers. Pillar will be on cooldown, giving some more space for Connors to play. He can always W the wall so and then jump in for more. Is it a fight? Flash Charm's gonna land. Can they kill him? The knockups keep landing and Dokla drops. What a setup by Bjergsen. The bot wave's still getting farmed, so TL are in control. And Contracts may not be able to play with this one at all. Red buff means some damage. It is gonna be the claim on Rift Pair of TL. Get everything here in game four. And COG do not even get a plate because Hans Stama stayed bottom lane that entire time. A very weird sequence by COG. You could tell they didn't want to give the Rift Herald over, but were unable to do anything proactive to stop, but they didn't have the bot lane tempo, and they were unwilling to straight up concede. Yeah, I really the part that was the best here from Team Liquid is the call to have Hansama circle back to bottom lane. Mm. CLG think that, oh, they're gone. They're, they're missing from lane. They're going to overcommit to this, but they don't. Hansama gets back to the tower, collects all the minions, and this is a massive early game lead now for Team Liquid. They want to go to Silver Scrapes. They're looking like it right now. It's feeling pretty good. Drake's still alive for the first one. Uh, on our way, on a 1500 gold lead though, Team Liquid definitely feeling good. Hansama is happy here on 95 CS. Highest in the game momentarily as Luger now ties and passes him, but still looking good down there. Cole nearly done. Luger needs one more wave. He'll put him pretty close to shield bow money when that happens. Won't quite have it, but it's getting close. Or JJ, Janna roaming. 
Big difference here between the Jenna and the Yumi in Enchanters. Using that move speed, gets up to the top lane. Centaurin also coming. Dokla under attack. 1v3 has ultimate. Will it be enough? He can lock the first diver into place, but they just hit the turret itself. A chomp on a one. Looks like they are not going to summon the Herald yet. Chompers could be good. He actually oh. jumps into a misplay by Dokla. Down to half, nearly knocked up. That might have been the, the, the combo. I think if they land that ulti, they go for more. Yeah, C TL in no rush, though. They know they're just chipping this turret down. Two plates without even having to drop Herald. Contracts also has to move up to cover, so no pressure being generated anywhere else by CLG as TL just keep picking up the plates. Yeah, super smart early swap here with the rotation over towards bottom lane. Uh, getting off the early, early chunk on Dokla and allowing Whippo to chunk down some turret plates of his own. That Orn getting a turret plate and a half himself. Dokla trailing now, trying to come answer, but Team Liquid with the priority here on the first move to the objective, get big rewards again. They extend the gold lead. I mean, everything has gone Team Liquid's way, so CLG, I think are gonna be looking to make something happen. They are not the team to idly get outscaled. They get Crab in front of the Dragon Pit and might be looking to force a fight here. Look at the bottom side, all revealed by the Scryer's Bloom. Ward comes down, Doklet cannot get the kill. Luger, yeah, he's not gonna land if it's <laughs> invisible. Sorry, bud. So that vision will stay until the controller comes down. With the early coal rush, Luger is on Mythic. First one to it in this game, right? Greedy build of coal plus a single potion. Your farm's on point. Yeah, you get an 11 minute shield bow. Will it matter though is the question because looks like CLG not able to fight around it. Ansama still on his way, doesn't have it yet either. Doklo wants to use his ulti. And maybe when they see Bwipo revealing on top side, they'll head right on up there. Santorin as well reset up to the top side of the map. So Contracts has free reign on the bottom and they will at least move into <sighs> move into the area. Doklo is going to get 3v1 tower dove again. Yeah, I mean, Harold is still up. If they kill them here, they might even be able to take two turns. All right, Drake finally going to happen here. I think it's going to burn down pretty reliably again. Mythic here on the 80 carry. The boot combined comes across 12 minutes. Thank you for the free ones. Three plates down, and this Herald guarantees the final. Solo turret gold will go to Whippo. The plates will be shared one to one. There's the 210 for the plate plus the global gold on a Santorin. And a lot of money. Whippo might actually be number one right now. Whoa. Drake comes across on Sam being attacked. Luger wants it. Did they have the damage? Huge Janna ult builds a lot more space. The roots come across though. They may still oh, find this kill. 3v1, 3v2. Here comes a bit more. The ult's gonna get stuffed up for now. But Contract's almost what? back in range. He drops it to go for Hans. He drops the core JJ kill. And the heals, it's almost enough. Dead. It's gonna be close. They don't have it. Hansama gets one back. Meanwhile, they're 2v1. Oh! He immunes the knockup though. But does he have the health that's needed? He's still getting burned down by the Trundle ulti. W finds a slope, but the chomp is still gonna kill him. Across the map, TL get the kill. Team Liquid, they get the one for one on the dive on the bottom half of the map and successfully kill off Dokla again here with Santorin, Trundle, King. Attacking the turret as well. They're gonna get a substantial amount of damage. Look at him bite through it with the divine autos as well. He makes so much happen on Trundle. I really don't understand why they gave it through. There's no master plan coming together yep. in this one. It's just Santorin running over CLG in this game. Well done, Santorin. CLG leaving up his second most played, but Maybe his best champion right now. Ward spot, what's going on? They say, okay, 2v3, too much for us. Out they walk. Korja J might have gotten quick vision of Luger, but won't get much. He doesn't have spell thieves, so this won't be a poke that matters, but it might be a recall stop. Indeed it is. Let's try again. Korja J's Janna looking surprisingly clutch. He's landing a lot of those Qs, somehow surviving that dive down bottom lane where they actually are able to put up a pretty great defense, still don't lose the turret, and allowed them so much time to pull off that play on the other side of the map. This is a gargantuan gold beat. 4,000 already for Team Liquid with the scaling advantage as well. <laughs> I think he's got like at least deal money, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like, he's been in lane nauseous. for three minutes and change, so 1,200 gold. Okay, 1,700 gold. Yeah, even better than that. Uh, Might have got a, yeah, so share of something else maybe, but looking good right now is CLG are pushed back yet again. And that is going to be the turret falling as this whole time Luger got to kill a wave, but would have loved to buy a zeal plus and can't do it. Yeah, good interrupts from Core JJ and Han Sama over and over and over again. You mentioned Core JJ's Janet. It was also a big roaming impact from him. Uh, difference there with the with the Yumi, both mid lane and towards top lane. And now we'll transition towards the team fights with a massive.
massive gold difference that's going to actually be a real item advantage for Team Liquid. Donk, donk. Down goes the ward 15 minutes in. And TLR winning even harder in game four yep. than they were in game three. Every single game is getting better for TL. For an early game team, they are a late series team. I mean, Han Sama did talk about this during the 100 Thieves series, but I'm gonna pause that point because Team Liquid wanna fight this Rift Herald. Dokla's not here. TL have five in the area. Sidestepped here. Ornalty of course is available. Rank one on it. I popped yet again. Smite is 900. Here comes Bjergsen over the wall now as well. Team fight will start. Will it be enough though? As Orhold the front line finds a couple of bits of CC. And already Wukong is dropped. But Zeri's gonna fire for more. A flash safety from Whippo. Dokla tries to find his way in, but already it's Palafox down. Two for nothing. Looking for a third. It's gonna be it. And CLG, every single time it's Luger and Poom forced for away at the end as Team Liquid's front line just holds every time. The battle lines for Team Liquid too strong there. They bring all five, but Hansa. The Chompers are still there, though they keep landing. CLG failed to dodge them. And it's now Luger Force oh, 1. The ghost. ghost is on for a little bit more to get out, afraid of what Hans could do. Hans it's wants to keep that Jinx win rate alive, and Team Liquid are going to help him do it. 6.4k. They have a new Rift Herald to push down these turrets and further accelerate the game as well. They're not going to let Azir, Zeri, Yumi scale. This is a stomp, and you can understand CLG's idea here. Just kill the Jinx. But Everybody get through, but they can't do it fast enough, so he gets excited off of the Contract's kill and then is able to run away even though Palafox gets the shift in. And a great ultimate there, the Orn stopping Palafox, getting that knockup as he went in for the instant shuffle back. And if you're going to make that call, then you have to teleport earlier because you don't want to be yeah. waiting this teleport channel time when you go for the flash engage. You're missing out on critical seconds in basically engaging a 4v5. And Bwipo knows it. That's the Orn momentum right there. Winning the last two games on Orn. Orn duty never felt so it's good. Problem. It's a problem pick. I know that COG would have planned to ban Orn on 4-5, but TL surprised them by just blind picking it at the end of the first phase. It's not the difference, but it is a big difference in this game. And now you gotta die for the mid. He's near the wall, does so. He'll take the it money. will still die as they're running for safety. Pillar may land, but it shouldn't matter. Contract's always has his clone to get out as well, but we get the Herald the Charge on mid, so it's gonna be a two-tower push. Gold lead grows to 7,000. The fact that CLG has one Drake just doesn't matter because Team Liquid are absolutely crushing this one. So Han Sama has said he likes building momentum throughout the series. That's what he did in the FlyQuest series. They lost game one, and then they had increasingly <laughs> powerful stomps against FlyQuest. Uh -huh. And it almost seemed like it was going to be true in the 100 Thieves series. They don't get a single kill in game one. Game two, it's close and they lose. They win game three and four. Then Closer, like, kicks them 500 times and ends <laughs> the series. But aside from that aberration, they have been able to improve throughout these best of five series. And this game is an example of that. And that's what you expect from veterans. You know, poise on the stage in critical moments like this in best of five series. And that is the advantage Team Liquid are bringing to the LCS playoffs. Yeah. Poised now to push us to a game five here. Every series has got to be a banger. CLG has gone to five in all their series so True. far, for better or worse. Cloud9, Golden Guardians now about to be Team Liquid as well. Hansama, unkilled, untouched in this game, finds another tower kill. Seven to one, the score line. Six to one in turrets. Man, I mean, so what adjustments are they gonna make in game five? Yeah. I think that's, I think that's maybe, some teams stay really in the moment. I think that's COG. Other teams would actually start talking about what happens in game five. Personally, when I look back, Kobe, I still do not understand the Jarvan ban. This trend that's why, that's why we called it out. What and I was like, doing? okay, if they're banning Jarvan, then they have to ban Ban the trundle as well, surely, but they do not. And so that I definitely going to be an angle. They know this blueprint for Team Liquid. This this is not a surprise. This I is, think, you know, the straightforward. I think they got tricked. I think they were they were pinching and planning on picking trundle first, but then TL banned such that the Zeri just looked too good. And they're like, okay, literally every Zeri counter is gone. We must take it. Fine, we'll give over the trundle. Still doesn't make sense why it's Jarvan of all champions. Sure. But it would be, it, that has to be what they were thinking, and it might have just been 
having this pocket jinx to go mm -hmm. up against the Zeri is actually very clutch by Team Liquid. Yeah, and he's fine, right? He, he's showing up the team fights like he's the beneficiary. They didn't really win through bot, but they went through solos. First yeah. blood level two in the mid lane. Good job. Goes top lane. CLG's solos are 0, 5, and 0 combined. Yeah. Ventoran's 3, 0, and 3. They crush the solos, and Jinx is like, cool, we're chilling. Like, we're just gonna win solos, it's fine. Like, I'll be okay in team fights. Two and a half items, he's comfortable. And even though Luger and Poom live through every team fight, because TL just kills frontline first, it's not enough. There's not enough damage there. Centauran chunked down to 1k. Decent damage there. Good sidestep on the zap. Contract. I know he sees on the cut side as well. Charm oh. Flash not gonna land. Here comes Wukong engage. Is it gonna matter though? Can they kill Bjergsen? No, it's gonna be contracts just dying. Nothing works for CLG and Team Liquid say no jungler. That's Baron. Yep, and now. With the smite advantage, they also have every relevant ultimate for the team fight or an ultimate. That's the most important thing. Ari, I didn't realize, had burned it, but they're still going to be going for this one. Here comes the teleport. CLG going to try and contest. No smite, but here we go. Damage comes across. Half health already on the Baron. They've got to take this fight, but how will they? Palafox can't get in. Orn's going to sound. They're going to find the knockup. The kill in the Baron. Now it's a team fight time. Whippo types him, but can't find much. Luger kites away, stays alive, but there is no meaningful damage dealt by CLG. He hugs the wall, deals some damage. It does not matter. Sidesteps the rocket, whatever. 9,000 gold lead. Red Bull Baron power play now might include an inhibitor for Team Liquid. This has got to be one of the biggest 21 minute gold leads we have seen in playoffs. Team Liquid absolutely crushing CLG in this game. Santorin, player of this series so far for Team Liquid, I yeah. feel like. Yeah. Such, such huge stuff from him. All right, let's see what he's doing now, though. <laughs> getting a little, he's getting a little frisky here. He gets it. Get as much as he can. He knows, he knows the advantage that Team Liquid have. Trying to push up. Look at this vision, denying everything from CLG. And now with Baron Buff, they're looking to finish. In this game, actually, what's interesting is it, it has become less and less about bot lane. I know we've been talking about mm. Sivir and Zeri being so important in the metagame. And the very first draft was, oh, we have to take Seraphine away. It's all about this. And it's actually been about who's done better on top lane. Think about game one. It was a stomp, and it was Dokla starting it out 1v2ing the top dive. Yeah. Dwayne uh, Price Reno has just been outright winning on Orn. Yes, with help, sure. But he's up in CS, and then shows the team points and goes like, we win now. What are you going to do about me? And, and it's been the solos who I feel like have done more to win this series. And so far, it's, it's still getting the better of it in, in game three and four. Have we come full circle with Whippo back on Orn? Seems like it. Mid inhib is going to drop. Bot inhibitor turret going to take some damage. Contrast can't find an engage. He's too tanky anyway. Not going to matter. Zap won't land, but there's a pillar, and that might be scary. Contracts. He's got nowhere to go. That's a knockup. That's a kill. He defends a dead turret and just dies. Swallowed along with it. Pelotons gets away from Hansama briefly, but they're still going for more. 5v4. It's going to look good. Bit of damage comes through for Luger, but half HP. Zeri is not going to carry this fight. 4v5. Pelotons healed back up. Shield bow popped. Couple of roots come across. Bit of time built by Azir, but Hansama gets a shutdown. He's unstoppable. CLG lose another solo lane. 0 6 combined, I believe as they go for that little bit more. Nexus turrets will fall. A 24-minute victory. Finally, a death on the Luger, but an absolute stop. Team Liquid crush CLG out of the heel, and we're going to game five. That was absolutely clinical by Team Liquid. It was very fast. Like, that was what peak team led. God, that's team what Liquid. peak Team Liquid looks like. <laughs> they pick the scale, but they're still strong early game, so they don't give you a window back in it when they are performing at their best. Chat, why do they take so long to warm up in the series? I don't know. Every time, starting out with the losses, building up here, and you saw it quickly, smoothly, they got up this time around. Everything's in full swing for Team Liquid now. But this playoffs has been too good. How many times have we been here before? Actually, last week, Team Liquid started 0-2, won the next two, but then could not complete the reverse sweep against 100 Thieves. This is the third time that CLG <laughs> is moving into a game five. They have won one <laughs> and lost the other. So it is still as dominant as that game was for Team Liquid. I think it's still anyone's series. It surely is. If there's anything we know about these playoffs, Anyone can win these games. We've yeah. had so many upsets, so many game fives, and we're going to get one more at least. 
it's going to be so much fun. So we'll go to the analysis pretty soon, but I, I want to see what the adaptation looks like. Because you mentioned, yeah. okay, Seal, maybe the team's going to be more in the moment. But now it's, okay, you've got about 10 minutes to start the next draft, and you got to figure it out. Uh, to me, Orin and Trundle are the obvious points to look at, but Dude, play style might matter too. How crazy would it be if they let Jarvan through? And then sent Torn carries. Like, and it would have right. been totally be like, like, see, I told you. Need to know. Oh my gosh. We'll, we'll see what see. happens. Obviously, uh, bands can get really tight when you're still afraid of the top picks in the metagame like Callista, but you're also afraid of things that they're good at like the Trundle. We'll see what happens. How do we go to the tape from our analyst desk? I mean, it's summer 2022 playoffs. We should have known this was going to five games. Apparently, Another that's game five. pretty much the only way a series can go at this point. TL strike back. Not only do they strike back, they strike back in the most dominant and fastest game of the entire split. That's regular season and postseason together. Team Liquid has officially come on lives. Yeah, I mean, I think the the big things, uh, the cast already talked about the Trundle, like we've talked about Santorin's Trundle. The Orin is really interesting considering that we've seen a prior series with CLG where they have definitely not seemed as comfortable with the Orin. And uh, Dokla does play counter picks into it, but the Camille did not get off the ground, so it's just really difficult to play from behind. And then I was going back and forth on whether I liked the Jana pick. Uh -uh. I love it. You have yeah, to love it, right? Yeah, I do. I really like it. Like, I really like it into what, you know, the Wukong, the Zeri, um, it's it's great actually here. Like, that, that is the pick that makes this draft. It's even really good into the Camille, which hadn't been seen yet, but yeah. you know yep. that you want to, yeah. you counter Orn with melee divers, usually like Fioras and whatnot, and John is great into Camille, especially because you break the Hextech ultimatum if you ever jump in before the ultimate is out. You just right. push him yep. right out, and then suddenly whoever he was trying to target out is taken care of. So right from the jump, even though CLG's scaling, you could argue, was better, the way the two team comps interact, I think, is heavily in Team Liquid's favor in actual 5v5. So if the Camille doesn't get ahead in the 4-1, it's really difficult to win. Yeah, it's funny because... This is just a great draft from both teams, honestly, because I actually liked CLG's idea, core concept, because, like, mm -hmm. oh, if we play the game normally, Team Liquid should never have five people in a, in a team fight at the beginning because Orange should be tied uh, to his lane and should be struggling. But look who's struggling right now! <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, I, I love the point you're making, Raz, because uh, I like I, I think we're all in agreement that objectively you get late enough, everybody's on six items. That's a pretty good looking comp for CLG. Yeah. They just mm -hmm. didn't account again for the early game that TL can manage to put together, especially at the hands of Santorin, who gets involved early and gets involved often. You've gotta know this is coming, right? Like Well you know it's coming, classic, but you don't know what lane. That's the classic problem. Classic Santorin <laughs> Jaws level music. three Trundle uh, gang. I feel like you could even uh, Target, which lane it is, right? Because you've seen him do this for Ari, yeah. who automatically has the charm, can lock you down easily, but yeah. Oh no, we got two charms in a row. By the way, Bjergsen's been hitting these. What are the we last even doing here? This why, one. why are we even contesting? Yeah, this one was just way too greedy because like your bot lane is uh, together, yep. bot lane, trying to chip at turret plates. So your entire purpose here is just trying to maybe get a smite steal and just to keep tabs on Watch them. the Janna here though. This is where the Janna comes up Court big as Contracts with the engage. Yeah, see ya, get out of here. Court, or, uh, contracts does 201 total damage in this fight. 201! The Janna NATO knocked him up right as he drops his ult. So he's just spinning around the middle of everybody. Little yeah. pop, Beyblade drops right after. And uh, <laughs> it's just too easy for Team Link from there because they the Ari pick getting ahead gave them some leverage to playmaking in, in the mid mm -hmm. game, which allowed them to snowball that hard. The early game, the early gank by Santorin and whatnot, and then these skirmishes were just so heavily in their favor. And it's worth talking about the Jinx. The range advantage has always been the answer versus Zeri. We've th seen throughout the split picks like Twitch. Uh, not so much Jinx. The fact that it's being revived here and that they're putting so much resources towards bot lane to get them ahead. I, the most comical part about this game was the amount of times they stopped the back from Zeri and Yumi. Yeah because they were trying relentlessly Oof. to find a base timing. <laughs> oh! Yo, if you, were to take, slide. if you were to take the PGBs from this game, which we're looking at now, and the one from last, TL was in full control gold-wise, start to finish in both <laughs> of them. You compare that to the victories of CLG, Yeah, the gold did fluctuate. It hit both sides of the graph in their wins, and so it does seem to indicate that when TL gets control, they never relent. And I love bringing up the Jinx Raz, because especially considering how many bot lane bans we saw, yes. with the Seraphine, the Callista, the Draven, all of that. When you pull out something like Jinx and Janna in the face of all of that, it's going to completely warp the approach for the next game because you have to think differently about that bot lane. Yeah, especially since like the community and even the casters were question mark pinging some of the points of 
uh, the CLG draft in the band specifically, right? And that's fair. Mm -hmm. But then looking at the risk that uh, Team Liquid took with that draft, the Jinx being prioritized, the fact that you've mentioned all of the counter picks to the Zeri being banned, letting them have it, and then having this draft specifically to deal with the Zeri, you have to believe at some point during the week that they had practiced this and they were ready for this point on match point for CLG and it works out. Well, also, now Hans is, what, 13-1 and one on Jinx yeah, all the time? Ooh, so, that's like, scary. Yeah, that's good. obviously something. Like, Jinx isn't so out of meta that this is out of left field, right? right? And it's a comfort pick for him and something that they can go back and rely upon. We've seen TL do this in some of their drafts, so, uh, most obviously with the Bjergs and Zillion. But we have seen them come back and be like, we're comfortable with this. It's not so far out of meta that we don't know how to play it. And with the Janna, I thought it looked really good. So I will say also, there's one play I want to look at that I think is uh, interesting heading into game five yeah, because let's... we talked so much about the experience that both teams had and I feel like this play you can see the moment getting to CLG a little bit this is one of their few opportunities where they had a legitimately good setup to a play Contracts is on a flank after already burning everything from the Janna just EQ alt the Janna but he kind of hesitates a little bit gets knocked up doesn't finish her off then turns back around to try and get the Zeri they end up finding the kill but he drops as well in the turret in this entire time uh Team Liquid had the jungler up on the top side making that yeah. play. That should be a quick 2-0, grab the turret, you're back in the game. Mm -hmm. And just those little mistakes, they were playing so well through the first two games before there was any pressure on them. And it felt like, you know, this young squad suddenly has the moment ahead of them. They start fumbling a little bit and the solid veterans are starting to make the plays that are winning them the series. That and the Herald contest that I think uh, Raz mentioned, right? Because when you're trying to leverage something like that, it's like, okay, do we want to get gold on our bot lane? And are we just going to be posturing around this to look for a steal, like like you said, Raz? And, and trying to make those decisions, you could also see it, and part of it is compositionally, but you could also see it in the team fights where, like, someone's going in, but the rest of the team might not necessarily be on the same page. We saw it in the last game. We saw it a bit here. Not as much because, you know, TL just started... Uh, outpacing them so significantly. But now when you're looking at the way TL won their previous series, right? It was, or the way TL lost their previous series, rather, it was off of 100 Thieves, again, being having played together for so long, relying on a really, like, uh, an interesting draft, but also the Lisa in from Closer, right? Yeah. A comfort pick for him. So now I'm curious, I'm really curious to see what CLG select here, because like I said, I didn't mind their Game 5 draft against C9. Right, the one that they lost, where they saved the the Vex counter pick and, and stuff like that. I mm -hmm. thought they were in position to win that game, so now it's about execution. No, they clearly still have more up their sleeve, right? It's just a matter of what they're willing to bring out here when the pressure is on. And I think, uh, uh, like, it's it is a it is a worthwhile conversation, Raz. This idea of the experience and the way the players live up to pressure, because as we've seen with Team Liquid. They can have a disastrous 2v1 yeah. dive that goes totally awry. And they could go down 0-2 in a series and still have the confidence to come out and start locking up games in fastest split game times. And so for CLG, the question really remains, do they have that bit of edge to them is, that can, you know... Is anyone going to believe? Is anyone going CLG? I, know, I mean, I never believed. So, so I think every single human... Oh, of human, course, yes. Never, huh? Every, no, I never did. I, mm. I mean, I predicted well, CLG 3-1. Well, here's the thing. Every single so. human being watching the series no matter who they want to win, should be predicting Team Liquid. Right. Because TL, TL fans yeah. need to have the faith in themselves. And CLG fans, you don't want to believe too hard. And so if you predict them to win, so every single 100 person... 100% of our fans are Team Liquid. Team Liquid. Factions. All I'll Factual say statement. is, didn't TL start winning as soon as you put that CLG hat on? <laughs> 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 there you have it. The stage is set for game number five and Silver Scrapes. It all comes down to this. Tournament hopes and postseason hopes alive for both Team Liquid and CLG, but only one can come out the other end still alive in the postseason. We'll come back right after this Silver Scrapes. See you there. Nice muscle, bro. Nice okay. arms. Nice yeah. muscles, bro. Yeah, you like? Muscles, bro. Like my muscles, bro? Oh, this uh, shit doesn't close, man. Is that bro? You can see the like. Uh, you can you can see the progress, bro. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Check yeah. Yeah. Here comes Bjergsen over the wall now as well. T fight will start. Will it be enough though? As Orhol's the front line, finds a couple of bits of CC, and already Wukong is dropped. But Zeri's gonna fire for more. A flash safety from Guipo. Dokla doesn't find his way in, but already it's Palafox down. Two for nothing. Looking for a third. It's gonna be it. Next is Turrets will fall. A 24 Woo. minute victory. Finally a death on the Luger, but an absolute. Stop, Team Liquid!
Oh, my God.